Tom here from Learn Systems. We're going to talk about creating a true NAS system inside, essentially nested inside of an XCPNG system. Not something I recommend for production. There are use cases and reasons you may want to do this. If you have only a single server, you want to build your lab out with this is pretty much the biggest use case because I do test out true NAS. Uh, core in my lab from time to time, not on hardware, but virtualized to so quickly test and spin something up. So those are the one time I'll probably say this is a useful thing to do, not something in production. But I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you the performance results of accessing the hard drives directly versus accessing them with a nested version of TrueNAS, some of the pros and cons and some of the challenges you might run into when you're testing this and hopefully save you a little bit of time and headache um, if you think this is a good thing to run in production. Before we jump into that, let's first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now I'm going to first mention PCI pass-through. This is what a lot of people talk about, and I have found this to be a very hit and miss process with TrueNAS specifically. It works fine. PCI pass-through is a very functional part of XCPNG, and I'll leave a link right here in the documents of exactly how to do it. And one of the things you can do is take the controller. For example, if you have a system that boots off of one set of drives, but then has a controller that controls another set of drives, such as an LSI controller set up to pass the drive through, you could then use this process to pass that LSI controller through. The reason I say this is hit and miss is I have seen people tell me it works great, and I have also tested myself and seen it not work great, uh, causing weird corruption errors and things like that. It apparently is, and this is not just XEPNG, there are sometimes inherent problems of passing through certain devices through PCI buses that is a little bit you know, challenging sometimes. The driver may not work properly, it may not pass through properly, and it's really not a problem that shows up at all until we got the system under heavy I.O. load and we were loading about 15 VMs on the system, and then the problem starts showing up in the form of CRC errors and a lot of ZFS errors that were hard to troubleshoot, but went away once we put this on direct hardware um, so we knew the hardware was all fine. The way we solved it and the way we're going to demonstrate this here, and I've done a video on this topic already and I'll leave a link to it so I'm not going to cover this part of it again, is Zen Server Hard Drive Whole Disk Pass-Through. Now, besides not being able to get smart status inside of the FreeNAS system, I did find this to be a very stable way to do this. And me and Xavier worked together to build his system out and we found this to be a very stable way to do this. We're gonna be doing some videos upcoming on that topic. Uh, but by taking Zen Server and individually passing through the hard drives with this methodology, uh, we had no problems working it. And this is the way I demo it in my lab. Now, the server we're gonna be doing this on, I'll leave a link to, is this Supermicro Super Server, a super storage server. And that particular server with the same specs are what this system is running on, so I'm not gonna dive into every little nook and cranny of the specs on it. You can just look through that video and I have all that outlined in there and I'll link to the forum post as well. All right, now what I have done is loaded XCPNG on that server, works fine. So it, uh, from a review standpoint of just using XCPNG on that super storage server, no problems there. But then the question of how do you configure all that storage that's available in there and what are some of the methodologies? Well, you could let Zen Orchestra configure along with the XCPNG system uh, and load ZFS on there and manage it that way. So I did. And I also have TrueNAS 12 that we loaded on here and set that up. Now, the first question about setting up TrueNAS Core on here is, what do I use as a template? Because I don't see a TrueNAS Core template in there or any BSD templates. Um, I just grabbed the Debian template. No big deal there. So we called it TrueNAS Core 12, TrueNAS Core. Um, we'll give it, oh, I don't know, 16 CPUs, maybe 8 gigs, uh, one more than that, let's say 32 gigs of RAM. ZFS generally uses quite a bit of a memory for caching. So uh, the OS isn't really what takes all the space. It's going to be the caching. So do that as you will. 
go here, TrueNAS. Uh, this is also how I demo the TrueNAS scale video I did recently. But once again, I use this in the lab. So there's the TrueNAS 12 beta. We'll just choose that network. We do need a local storage disk to put this on. We'll just make it 64 gigs and give it the name TrueNAS Core Drive. Now, this is the first part where I'm basically using standard local storage that's on here to load there. So we're just going to load it up on this local storage, hit create. I didn't want it to boot because I want to go over here to advanced. A couple quick things that need to be set is nested virtualization. Uh, if you don't turn this on, I the jails will probably not work at all. So do turn that on for that. Basically, kind of like it sounds, you're nesting one server into another. So if you want that nested virtualization to work, you're going to need to turn that part on. Um, I don't need network boots. The other thing I'm going to turn off. Other than that, save and go over here and start it up. And we'll run through the load process really quick. Now there's only one drive, so I'm going to choose this. We have not added all the other drives. This is just the local drive I created for this demo. So we'll just set it up on that one. Proceed to installation. Someone's listening and saying that's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, and they'd be correct. <laughs> Installation's done. Shut down the system. All right, and right here, I'm in the directory, SRV, four drives, four NVMe drives, my, you know, less than clever naming scheme. And you can see that I have symbolic link created. Now, if you haven't watched or don't understand what I'm doing here, that's what this video right here is for, where it walks you through all the process of creating the symbolic links. So you can pass through individual hard drives to XCPNG. So that's all we did there, is pass through those individual drives. And when you go over here to storage, they show up here and it sees the disks. And I named them NVMe, actually, I believe the default name is unknowns. So I called them NVMe123, actually somehow I added one twice. Um, that's mistakes I have made before. We'll put this one as four, just typo in there. There we go. Um, if you don't do this, it doesn't matter. These are these names are just for your reference. It's just to uh, keep your own sanity when you're naming them. So MV1234, there we go. Then we're going back over here. We'll find our TrueNAS system. We'll go to disks. We're going to attach them. This is why you want to make sure you do this properly. So we want to choose the drive, attach. Attach another one. Number two, and you can see if these all had the same name, it would be confusing because you may or forget which one you've done. And three, there we go. Attach. Now, here is the standard Zen repository that can have more than one drive assigned to it. That's right here. We go back over to here. These drives cannot be assigned anywhere else. These drives are dedicated to FreeNAS and FreeNAS is getting raw access to them. So they don't know when you're here in Zen Orchestra under storage, although it, you can click on this, it doesn't understand what's on there. So it always shows the total of the drives, but does not understand the contents of the drives. So it'll always just look like this, no matter what you add to them. And yes, you can actually attach them to another VM, it will be unpredictable behavior. So uh, that might be a fun experiment to do that. Uh, but if you're attaching to this particular free NAS. Now, what you could do, as long as you're not running at the same time, is possibly connect them to two different instances of true NAS that have access to those drives at different times. It might be an interesting experiment. But ideally, when you're setting this up for true NAS, you want to put them inside of here. So now we can fire up our true NAS system. Go ahead and start this up. And it's booting off of here, which this one, I can do all the normal snapshots. By the way, when you do a snapshot, it's going to give an error on these drives here because you can't snapshot all those drives. So if we say new snapshot with the system, it should also produce uh, an error as well. And operations not permitted because it's operations not permitted on those other drives and it's trying to snapshot those other drives as well. So just be aware, those are another challenge you'll run into is you have to, uh, well, there's some advanced ways to do it where you don't snapshot these um, when you're doing it. So either way, you have to be careful um, because these are different challenges you add when you are passing through either the hardware or the drive. Now, if you pass through the hardware, this wouldn't be the case because you wouldn't even see these drives in here because the hardware would be passed through. But warning, if you try it that way and you run into some weird problems under heavy load, 
that might be the reason why it's a pass-through. And I don't have an exhaustive list of compatible cards that have no problems and ones that work well. So I'll just have to roll with it from here. But by doing it this way, and it's running through its first time setup, um, I've found it to consistently work and work relatively well, except for, and we'll get into some benchmarking here in a second once we get into show you when it's up and running. So free NAS, true NAS, keep getting mixed up. True NAS is booted uh, and 3.142. So we'll log in here with our fancy one, two, three, four, five, six password. Get started. Storage pools, add, create a pool. for NVMe drives. Let's encrypt them. I understand I'm going to lose data if I don't back up the encryption. And we'll do them as RAID Z. So just standard RAID Z1, four drives, no problem. Create, confirm. Oh, name must not begin with the later. F-O-U-R. It's a ZFS thing, don't put a letter in front. Great, confirm. Download the encryption key, don't lose that. If you do, you won't get the data back if you choose to encrypt drives. I recommend encryption, I recommend backing up the key. And that's pretty much it from here. It's just a normal free NAS setup. So Zen test, we do want sync disabled because we're gonna do this as NFS, submit. Quick and dirty, we're just gonna open up the read write permissions to everything. Save, sharing, and we're gonna do an NFS share. Submit, enable service, no problem. Go back over to here. We want a new storage. So this is our uh, nested true NAS core storage description, copy pasta, NFS 192.168.3.142. Hit the little question, find the path. Hey, there it is. Create. Voila, we have it. It's working. Now we have a nested TrueNAS core that we have to first boot the system in terms of XCPNG. Then we have to boot TrueNAS. Then we can boot any VMs that are stored on this one nested inside of here. Now this is where the good and bad comes in. FreeBSD has not the best support for Zen Server. And what I mean by that is we're going to talk about how fast it can talk to it. So this is all physically in one server, which means the local networking is very, very local. So we're going to pull up iperf on here. So we'll do iperf3. Uh, this is on the actual server, XCPNG itself. So iperf3-client, 192.168.3.142. Actually, I got to turn on in TrueNAS here. Services, edit, login as root with password, save, turn SSH on. All right, SSH is ready. SSH root, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and we'll do iperf3-s for server. Then we're over here, C for client. And how fast does it talk? Not bad. So good news is FreeBSD is actually getting some reasonable speed inside of here. So we are able to get this system to tr uh, talk at 15 gigs a second. Now the reason and how this actually works internally is the FreeBSD is connected to the same bus interface, but does not necessarily have a speed attached to it. Speed is when you're dealing with physical network interfaces. When you have virtual ones, your limitations are basically the internal bus architecture of the XCPNG server. So in this particular instance, with this particular server, we're able to get 15 gigs a second. So that's a reasonably impressive number that we have here. So now from here, well, it looks like it bounced up to 18. That's cool. 
17. All right, quite a bit of speed that we're getting internally. So now we can go and dive into some of the testing. And for that, we have a VM running Pharonix. So we'll go back over here. Debian with Pharonix. And currently, I have it setting on the local MVME storage. So we're actually going to do a test with the local MVME storage and see how fast it is. So we'll go ahead and uh, run it on here. We'll fire it up here and then we'll migrate it over. Now I'm going to fast forward and jump through to get some of these tests run. Uh, so you have a, uh, don't have to wait for them all to conf configure, but I will leave, of course, the Pharonix link when it's done for doing this. And Pharonix, if you're not familiar, is a free uh, benchmarking software that you can download for Linux. We skipped ahead a lot because there's a lot of testing I did to run all of these. And I got some interesting results. So on the single NVMe storage, that is the boot drive in this one, which is a standard NVMe, um, pretty fast local storage, which is to be expected when you're having it right to a single device. And I have another local NVMe test. And what I did was the four NVMe's are in the front of this particular server. I was testing those. So we have similar results when you're running single, which is kind of makes sense. You're going to get you know, raw I.O. performance relatively fast in NVMe. There's no processor power needed really in terms of calculating the software RAID for ZFS or anything like that. Then we did XCPNG with local ZFS sync disabled and XCPNG managed local ZFS. Now, both of these are just default, as in just threw it out there, turn it on. There's all kinds of tuning you can do inside of XCPNG to better enhance the uh, performance of ZFS, including uh, because it runs in DOM0, adding more memory to what you refer to as DOM0 to further help the caching. Did none of that. I just turned it on, uh, set up these drives so I could have a baseline for what these drives perform at. Then we had the TrueNAS test. And I had TrueNAS core test test two. Now, the only thing different on this very one, the very first one, or bottom one, I should say, was I was trying, trying to turn hardware offloading off on the network interface to see if it would make it better or worse. It did seem to make it worse. And this is where things get a little bit confusing. These tests were just run back to back. And these are the kind of bugs I've seen when you virtualize TrueNAS. Although it seems to be quite stable in this configuration, it doesn't crash, it doesn't give me any CRC errors. Even after all these tests I was running, we'll go back over to the dashboard. The drives are fine, the pool shows perfectly fine online, no errors, so no issues with the pool. Look we'll back over here, just look at the status. The pool's perfectly fine, but there's plenty of deviation. So the first test uh, was actually, I should say the third test, I think was this one. So I ran them a couple times to see if it would do something different. And it was running up here. Now this bracket represents the wide deviation of performance. Matter of fact, the test took very long to run because the way the Fronex system works is there's way too much deviation to test. It keeps running a few times to try to get a bigger and bigger average. Um, it didn't have to do that at all in the other scenario when it was running on the local one. And then once it decided to go slower, which I don't don't know what the cause was, it decided to stop right here and stay there. Uh, so once it hit the 179, you can run it again, and it would show up roughly the same again. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And then we go down here, this is the random read engine. This is the IOPS we're getting once again, really high IOP performance uh, from the single drives individually, reasonably good from here, and of course, consistent. And there's our bracket of wide uh, performance, potentially issues there. And then we back over here to the more consistent numbers that fell down to. This is with the hardware offloading um, set to normal. This is with hardware, hardware offloading on the network card turned off. And we go down to a random write test and kind of similar results. The writing was a little bit slow on all of them. Uh, once it got into ZFS for this configuration, like I said, this is something that can be tuned. You can also add, because this was an NFS write, you could add a slog drive to ZFS, which would have enhanced it. And that can apply to FreeNAS or any of these. But I just want to go over some of the things about how this worked, show you, show you that it does work. The scenario you may want to use it, like I said, for setting up something in your lab. But do expect that there will be some performance issues, which is one of the reasons I don't recommend doing this inside of a you know production environment. This is less ideal for that. But if you wanted to, or your budget only allows for a single server, and you want to know if you can run FreeNAS inside of here, it does seem to be quite stable as long as you're passing the drives through. It works. It's functional. Um, it's 
a little bit inconsistent sometimes is the one challenge I found, which is weird because the random write test became all the way across all of them relatively stable uh, on there. So this is once again the TrueNAS core with the hardware network offload turned um, to set to normal, not turned off, and then turned off here. I should have labeled them as such. Um, I was just going to hurry, so to speak, as I was getting aggravated with the inconsistent results to try to find out why they were inconsistent. And well, it's just because it's running virtualized. The still the best and most ideal situation is going to be running TrueNAS on dedicated raw access to the hardware. That's where you're going to get the best performance and have the most options for performance tuning on it uh, because you're not dealing with any extra virtualization layers. Or you can run XCPNG if you just want to take a group of drives and manage them via ZFS. Granted, with XCPNG, when you do this, there are work instructions they have for setting up ZFS and XCPNG. You don't get a UI to manage functional parts of ZFS. You manage that from the command line. I'll throw those out there for notes, and I'll leave links to it. And, of course, the documentation if you want to try the PCI pass-through because maybe your card works very good with this. And that would be awesome because then you could pass it through and maybe get a little bit better performance. But still, once you virtualize TrueNAS at all, you're going to have some quirkiness with it. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and... Let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.